Hey, it's Donny Benet, and welcome back to Back to the Studio. I'm in my studio, Donny Lane Studios, and uh, it's been quite a while, but uh, I thought I'd talk to you about some things near and dear to my heart. So first of all, we're on the drums. This has been a new revelation for me. Uh, during the uh, pandemic we had the last few years, it gave everybody a chance to skill up, and uh, the drums were something that I always, always played as a kid. Uh, my younger brother's a fantastic drummer. And I didn't have a kit for years. I was predominantly working with drum machines. So I got a kit, practiced every day, realized how bad I'd been for the past 20 years. And uh, it was a long road back to it. And I'm um, still fairly average. But hey, that's what Beat Detective's for. So a little bit about this kit. Uh, it's a dream kit. I've always wanted one of these. This is a Yamaha Recording Custom early 80s model. Uh, during the pandemic, I did buy myself a nice pearl wood fiberglass, which was pretty awesome. They sound great, but uh, this popped up, did a bit of wheeling and dealing, and uh, here we are. So it's fairly standard sizes, 13 inch tom, 16 inch, 16 inch tom, 22, 14. I mean, that's the, that's the sounds you want. Um, got a matching snare drum, which uh, was almost a scam, but that's another story. And I've got some fantastic um, cymbals. I'm a uh, official pug cymbals endorsee. Um, well, he's my younger brother and also the drummer in my band, and he makes amazing handmade cymbals. They are fantastic. Um, I mean, they sound great. They record really nicely. I'm using them on um, the piano and some new recordings coming later on. And yeah, some of the uh, favorite drummers I have, I, when I try and set this kit up, I think about recording and I try and sound like those drummers, well, a poor version of that. Um, Mr. Steve Gadd, Dennis Chambers, Harvey Mason, uh, Jeff Picaro. If I'm going for that kind of Steve Gadd sound, I'll pull out my uh, Vic Firth Steve Gadd signature series sticks, and I'll sound nothing like Steve Gadd, but I'll pretend that he could be holding these very same sticks and I'm um, channeling his inner energy and performance. But yeah, that's the drum kit. Let's take a look at the drum machines. Here we have the classics of drum machines. The Lin LM1 and its little brother, the Lin Drum. Inappropriately referred to as the LM2 because uh, LM1 is the initials of Lin and the other guy that put money in. So don't call that an LM2. This one was the uh, price of a small apartment back in the 1980s when it was released. And uh, the way synth prices are going these days, it's almost back there again. I was very fortunate enough to get this back in the GFC times. Um, I'd went and saw Prince in concert in Sydney, and uh, I was very lucky. I had nosebleed seats, but the sound was fantastic. And uh, any time he'd play something with an LM1 sample, I came home and I was like, I have to find one of these. So I searched the internet far and wide, and eventually found three versions on the Yahoo Lindrum, the LM1 owners forum. This one came from uh, California. It took a lot of negotiations. It went to uh, Bruce Forrett, who um, moved all the tuning up the top, which is very, very handy. And uh, I mean, this thing is just, I mean, listen to this. I mean, that's the sound of Prince. You have a whole array of sounds, congas, toms. Snare, soft snare, kick, soft kick, hat, soft hat, cowbell, open hi hat, gunshot, other gunshot, tambourine, soft tambourine, kabasa, soft kabasa. And you program them in, um, basically, it's quite an, um, I think it's quite simple. You pick your number, and what have I got here? That's cool. Let's just uh, piss that off. Now I've got nothing. And we can uh, adjust the swing. We can adjust the correction. But let's keep it simple. Let's add a kick. And voila. We can add a snare after. Now that's cool. Let's beef it up a bit. Bit of 
basser. And of course, some hi hats. That's it, it's beautiful. I use the uh, external clock on this through a Jupiter to give me a pulsating bass line. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. These are, these are, I feel very privileged to be the custodian, custodian of this machine. Now, moving on to the Lindrum. I mean, this one's cool. I always love the bass drum on this. It sounds like a basketball being bounced. And uh, this is a little cheapened. I mean, you know, when they realized that only the top studios could own this, and again, I have no idea who owned this before. I'd love to find out. They made this cheaper model. Uh, and it's not as, you can't edit as much the sounds. I mean, you can get it fixed up by Mr. Briz or someone equally as talented to have all these chips and sounds, but I think it sounds great. I mean. Combine it with the live kit, sounds great. And there you go. So I like using both of them when I make recordings. Uh, it, it kind of gives it a little... I usually demo on these things and then I'll lay a drum part down and then um, because I'm a great drummer or I can't pull great sounds, I'll kind of blend these sounds. I think it gives it a unique kind of take. I mean, it's not that unique. Other people do it. But uh, it's how I do it and that's important to please yourself. So there you have it. Just a taste of the drum machines in Donnyland. The Lindrum the LM1, and of course my beautiful live kit. So until next time, I'm Donny Benet, and I'll catch you back in the studio.